Hiya, my name is Dr. Harim Jafar. I am periodontist. Today I will talk about smoking and periodontal disease. Please subscribe to my channel, Dr. Harim Jafar, specialist dentist. So, we know that uh, smoking is highly prevalent and can be considered an epidemic in both developed and developing nation. And tobacco smoke contains thousands of noxious chemicals and comprises both gaseous phase and solid phase. All dental patients must be asked about their smoking status, but there is a challenging of assessing smoking status of the patient. Actually, we have as a classification of smokers, we have five types. In general, we have smoker and non-smokers. But in more details, we have heavy smokers who smoke more than 20 cigars a day and light smokers who smoke less than 20 cigars a day, while current smoker are those smokers who smoked previously more than 100 cigars a day and uh, now they are currently smoking, they are continuing on smoking. While former smoker who have smoked previously more than 100 cigarettes a day and now they are quitting, they are currently non-smoker. While the case of non-smoker who have not smoked more than 100 cigarettes a day in their lifetimes previously and currently they are non-smokers. So. Uh, we have these classifications, but there is a challenge of assessing a smoking status, especially, for example, in, uh, in current smokers. For example, many smokers are trying to quit and therefore simply asking how many cigarettes they are smoking today may not give an accurate assessment of their lifetime exposure. For example, a patient currently smoking five cigarettes per a day may have been smoking 40 cigarettes per a day until yesterday when they decided to cut down. To get appropriate calculation of the number of pack per year for each current smoker, we should have the number of packs uh, that smoked per a day multiplied by the number of smoking years. For example, one pack a year is a cumulative exposure that corresponds to, to smoking of 20 cigarettes, which is one pack, per a day for one year. So, for example, a smoker who has smoked 20 cigarettes per a day for 15 years has a 15 pack years of smoking so that's that's a quite uh, let I say quite confusing uh, except for the professionals uh, we as periodontists know how to calculate this but just to know that this is how we assess the current status of smoker uh, who's currently smoking so uh, we talked about that smoker have smoked more than 100 cigarettes in their lifetime and now they are smokers which are current smokers and the former who, who smoked more than 100 cigarettes and they, now they quit while the non-smoker they didn't smoke more than 100 cigarettes and now, now they are also non-smoker. Uh, so this is regarding the assessing the, the current status of the smokers and the non-smokers. Let us go to the effects of smoking on prevalence and severity of periodontal disease. We know that smoking is the major risk factor for periodontitis, affecting the prevalence, extent and severity of the disease. In addition, smoking adversely impacts the clinical out outcome of non-surgical and surgical therapy as well as the long-term success of implant placement. So here we have, in case of gingivitis, 
case of gingivitis. We see here that there's a decrease in gingival inflammation and bleeding of probing. And this is not the decrease in the inflammatory infiltrate. Actually, it is the decrease in clinical signs and symptoms in case of gingivitis. You have peripheral ischemia in case of smokers, so you have less bleeding on probing. And you have subgingival low temperature in case of smoking, which, uh, which when we have a low temperature, we, uh, the patient doesn't represent uh, red gingiva. Uh, and, uh, other, and by this way, they exhibit the clinical feature in a minimum way than, than this the non-smoker one so you may measure the bleeding and probing and see the clinical feature and you say oh that that's a, a, a healthy case or near to healthy but this is the masking property of smoking in cases of gingivitis well cases of periodontitis uh, in cases of smoker we have increased prevalence and severity of periodontal destruction increasing pocket depth, attachment loss, and bone loss. And also there's increased rate of periodontal destruction and increased prevalence of severe form of periodontitis. And also, in some cases, we have an increased prevalence of tooth loss. Also, increased prevalence will increase with the number of cigarettes smoked per day. So as much as the smoking will increase, the susceptibility of the disease will increase. And we've, there is a lot of studies that support that uh, with the decreasing or with the smoking cessation, there will be a decrease in prevalence and severity of periodontitis. So these are regarding the effect of smoking on prevalence and severity of periodontitis. We should know some facts. Uh, first of all, smoking is the major risk factor of periodontal disease, as we said. And smoking is responsible of half of periodontitis cases. And depending on the study, 10 to 15 percent of adults in most populations that are examined have advanced chronic periodontitis. So we as dental practitioner and uh, we as uh, professionals, we should spare most of the times on helping the patient to quit smoking uh, rather than just starting the treatment and following the patient and see that uh, why the periodontal therapy doesn't work well and why there is still periodontal destruction while I am doing scaling and polishing and surgical operations. So. This, uh, this became a fact that uh, as long as the patient is a smoker, the risk of uh, the healing and the advancement of your, the risk of healing will be decreased, it will be increased, and the risk of uh, increasing the severity of the disease will increase. So we should take these facts into mind. Regarding the effect of the smoking on etiology and pathogenesis of periodontal disease, the increased prevalence and severity of periodontal destruction associated with smoking suggests that there is a host bacterial interaction. Normally seen in chronic periodontitis are altered, so there is an impaired immune mechanism. There is a defect in the function of uh, mononuclear, uh, um, the monocytes and, and the neutrophils. And uh, it will result in more aggressive periodontal breakdown. This imbalance between bacterial challenge and host response may be caused by the changing composition of the subgingival plaque, that's say from changing from more gram positive to gram negative and increasing the mass of the pathogenic organisms and changing in the host response there will be an impaired 
or, or there will be a neutrophil dysfunction, an immune dysfunction, or combination of, uh, of the above. And the, the effects will be as follows. On the level of microbiology or bacteria, there is no effect on the rate of plug accumulation. The plug accumulation is a steady procedure, uh, have no relation to smoking status. While in, there will be an increased colonization of a putative microorganism or more gram negative microorganisms. Regarding the immunology, there will be an impaired neutrophil dysfunction. There will be altered neutrophil functions and also increased gingival cravicular fluid uh, and there will be more tumor necrosis factor, prostaglandin E2 and neutrophil collagenase and elastase and these, the discretion of some of these cytokines and chemokines will affect the both bone and, and collagen fibers. For example, prostaglandin E2 will affect the bone metabolism and matrix metalloproteinase will affect the collagen metabolism. While regarding the, the physiology, the changes that happen uh, on the physiological basis, with developing inflammation, increasing gingival crevicular fluid flow and bleeding on probing and gingival blood vessels are less in smokers than non-smokers. In addition, the oxygen concentration in healthy gingival tissue appear to be less in smoker than non-smokers. Although this condition is reversed in the presence of moderate inflammation. Subgingival temperature are lower in smoker. That's why you, you, you doesn't see uh, a redness. Uh, more redness is appear in the non-smokers. The clinical feature will appear in the non-smoker better than the smokers. Our recovery from the vasoconstriction by local anesthetic administration take longer times. So there will be decrease in gingival blood vessels, decrease in gingival crevicular fluid and bleeding on probing and this decrease is due to peripheral ischemia and uh, there will be decreased subgingival temperature. That's uh, why, uh, as we told you, there will be a less redness and increase inflammatory mediators, which affect the uh, immune system and bone and soft tissue. And uh, also, from physiological point of view, there will be an increase or prolonged time. Uh, of recovery from local anesthesia uh, in patient of smoker than non-smokers. Another point is effect of smoker on the response to periodontal therapy. The effect of smoking on response to periodontal therapy we have on three levels. In case of non-surgical periodontal therapy, surgical and implants, and also maintenance cares. In non-surgical way, there will be a decrease in, in gain of attachment level. There will be decreased clinical response to root debridement. There will be decreased negative impact of smoking with increased level of plug control. and also decrease reduction in pocket depth. So all the non-surgical procedures, when we do it, we, we doesn't uh, get a good result when the patient is smoker regarding the plug accumulation, regarding the attachment loss and uh, gaining the attachment regarding of decreasing in the pocket depth. Well, in case of surgery, surgery and implants, there will be decrease in pocket depth reduction and decrease clinical attachment gain after flap surgery. When you do a surgery and you need to decrease the pocket depth and to gain a clinical attachment 
uh, in, in cases of while you're doing a surgery. In smokers, this this uh, procedure will be less. You, see, you may see that the pocket depth at the same level or even deepened or the same attachment level or maybe worsen. So uh, there will be also decreased gain in clinical attachment level and decrease in bone fill while we are we doing a bone graft and increase in recession an increase in membrane exposure when we while well, we put in the membrane after guided tissue regeneration and also uh, smoking will affect the deterioration of fortification after surgery and uh, it, will, it will affect the depth of the pocket after we are doing bone graft procedure that say either failure of the bone graft or uh, it will have a minimum effect if the patient is a smoker. Also increase in the risk of implant failure and peri-implantitis uh, in cases of a non-smoker, uh, in cases of smoker patients. Well, regarding the maintenance care, well, we try to maintain the case and follow up the case. Uh, we see that there will be an increased pocket depth and attachment loss during maintenance therapy. So your maintenance therapy will be reversed in smoker. And there will be increased disease recurrence in smokers. And also increased need for retreatment in smoker. And also increased tooth loss in smoker after surgical therapy. So, you should know that the smoking uh, cessation, which we talk about, is the most important procedure and regime to be, uh, uh, to be undertaken by the patient. And you should advise your patient because most of the, your efforts, most of your surgical treatments, non-surgical treatments, implant procedures, uh, will uh, will take a reverse effect while you are uh, continuing on smoking. So this is for today. Uh, I hope you get benefit from it. Uh, and I don't want to make this lecture a uh, long lecture uh, to be more understandable. And in the part two, I will try to yeah, continue on this subject and finish the effect of smoking on periodontal disease. Thank you for your listening.